tonight on Investigative Reports. We've got killers out there whose only goal is to rack up the new high score and get on the cover of Time magazine. We profile America's SWAT teams. That's what this whole unit does for a living. We go through that door and ultimately face the problem one-on-one. -on -one. It's a chess game, and ultimately we win. The new dangers they face. You know, I look at the skyline of the city of Los Angeles, and I'm saying, I wonder what building won't be there 10 years from now. And I think that's a good question to ask if we don't take care of business, because that'll exactly be what happens. And the future, our future, that may very well hang in the balance. For August 19th, 2002, this is Investigative Reports. They are the elite of America's law enforcement. A special breed of police officer who, as one expert puts it, runs to the sound of the guns and knows what to do once they get there. They are America's SWAT teams, and in these uncertain times, they increasingly are called upon to serve as our front line against a stunning array of threats. Tonight, we go inside SWAT to study their training and history and to chart their future as SWAT teams prepare for everything from a high school kid with a gun to a terrorist cell with biological, chemical, and even nuclear aspirations. The name itself explains their mission. Special weapons and tactics. Special weapons like sniper rifles and assault weapons. Special dynamic tactics such as entering a building to subdue the most violent criminals, or covert tactics to achieve the same mission. In law enforcement, it's widely known when a citizen needs help, he calls a cop. When a cop needs help, he calls for SWAT. Whether it's time spent with a sniper rifle on the shooting range, or entering a building to confront a barricaded gunman, much of the world of SWAT is about training. There simply can never be enough. And that training is critical when you realize that most of the SWAT teams in the United States are not full-time. They have other duties like traffic patrol or detective work. But for the larger cities that can afford full-time SWAT teams, like the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, they are truly the elite of law enforcement. This is... Uh definitely the most exciting job on the department. It's a uh, real fast pace. There's something different every day. We never know what's in store for us. I'm living on a pager, so uh, it's got to be the best job on the department. I, mean, I know most people might find it hard to understand, but when you train so much and you have so much confidence in the people around you, um, I personally uh, don't feel a great deal of danger, although I know that there is danger there. For a SWAT team like L.A. County Sheriff's Department, many of the calls each year are to serve what's called a high-risk warrant. This may entail anything from raiding a drug lab to apprehending a fugitive from justice. Larry Glick is the director of the National Tactical Officers Association, the world's foremost professional organization for SWAT team members. SWAT team will actually go out and they'll do what's called an advance on the location. They'll drive the neighborhood, uh, they'll gather information about uh, neighboring houses, who lives in the area, are there any sentries, what is the uh, layout of the house, are there any fences, dogs, kids, elderly people. Okay, uh, this morning we're going to be serving a warrant. It's going to be at the Investigative reports will accompany the L.A. County Sheriff's Department as they prepare to serve a high-risk warrant to a local drug dealer at his home. We'll make entry into here. If we have trouble with this gate, we'll call ESD back up around for a pre-tied hook, and then when the gate gets pulled, we want that thing to just taco in itself and pull out and then go back uh, eastbound out of the problem. After the briefing, officers rendezvous at a command post near their target, where they gear up and prepare to move in. I have a team of uh, anywhere from six to eight deputies, and uh, we work uh, together all the time, train together. We try to depend on the element of surprise, so we don't 
give the individuals that we're going after, you know, too much advance notice. We'll load up on the, uh, for the Congo line here uh, at about five to seven and pull out the gate and just do a slow roll down there. And by the time we get there, it'll be uh, time for service. The plan is to move in quickly with an overwhelming show of force. Unlike TV, there's not a lot of uh, running through uh, rooms, yelling and screaming at people. You know, it's not like that. It's done in a much more reasonable manner and much more tactically sound than what you might see in TV. In most tactical situations, SWAT teams take their suspect without firing a shot. This assignment was no exception. But what if the scenario was different? Instead of a low-level drug dealer, what if the house being raided was the command center for a terrorist cell? We posed that question to the L.A. County SWAT team. How does a terrorist differ from some of the other cases that you will go on? They differ primarily in their beliefs and their determination to carry out their mission. Uh, criminals are generally motivated by greed. They look to escape so that they can continue their illegal enterprise. Or a terrorist, that may not be their primary function. They may be there to make a statement. In other words, generally terrorists uh, operate in the background, undetected. How has the mission of SWAT changed because of 9-11? Actually, probably about a year before 9-11, we began to see and appreciate the changes in the world and the environment and began modifying our techniques, training, and equipment. Uh, we've been working with uh, many vendors to enhance armor, both in response vehicle and personal body armor. We began changing our training techniques to uh, covert as well as overt. Slow and controlled, slow and controlled. Overt tactics usually involves a mission in which an overwhelming show of force intimidates the criminal into surrendering without a fight. Covert tactics begin with intelligence gathering, using a sophisticated array of high-tech equipment, a crucial first step in mission planning. This combination of tactics has evolved to meet SWAT's new challenges. When investigative reports returns, we'll examine some of the incidents that have shaped SWAT teams as we know them today. Incidents that have helped them prepare to face the new threat of terrorism. And we'll look at some of the new high-tech equipment SWAT teams have at their disposal. <laughs>